Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and this is the last video in the data module. Isn't that exciting? In the data lesson. Woohoo! So I think we've reached video number 40. That's a pretty good number as well. And this is all to do with lesson nine of uh, Zim School. Um, if you haven't seen the previous video, you should definitely see this one. It's, it's on Zim Base. So it's a PHP library or class uh, done by Zim to make accessing and, and inserting and updating database tables and records uh, easier. So um, please go take a look at the previous video if you haven't seen that yet. Oh, here's what we looked at. We went into the code module here. We scrolled on down. And by the way, we've hidden a bunch of stuff in the code. You'd have to scroll farther to get to here. And you want to arrive at ZimBase. In the last video, we went through what Base does and some examples of, of Base here, an HTML example and a Zim binding example. And now we're taking a look at the last one here, Woohoo! where we get to rate something. You <laughs> come in and, and do the rating. All right, let's give it a four. So we press that and we can come back and edit it, but there's a little press in there to make it a, to hold. Let's give it a five. Yeah, oh, uh, five, mostly five, almost five. Uh, there we go. See, that's why we press, press, there we go. All right, and we submit. Submit and a confirm. Woohoo! Here is the average. I think we brought up the average. Let's do a refresh on that. Try it again. So we've refreshed and uh, vote lower this time and submit and confirm. Woohoo! Oh, that's a nice average to leave it at. Okay, um, so how did we make that? Let's go in and take a look at the code then. I'll reduce that down. Here is stars. Now, the hopes aren't to talk too much about stars.html, where the Zim is, uh, but we'll, we'll take you through the binding there as well. We've already had videos on the bindings, but we may as well look at a few things. We've now made about 10 things with binding, and so we've gotten a little bit better at it and added a few features to it as well. So this is the code right here to make the stars and show all of the stuff. There's actually, I think, a Zim Explorer on all of this as well, or some Zim Bubbling or Zim Explorer on this. So you can go find that video on the YouTube if you want to look through, you know, know what's going on in this code. This code is also available in the zip file for the Zim Base, Zim Base zip file. You can find that. Uh, at, at the ZimBase um, page. So zimjs.com slash base.html or zimjs.com slash base, I guess we'll also get you there. All right, so uh, one thing we're doing is we're finding out if the user's already voted. Now we didn't implement that because we wanted to let you try voting a number of times, but we could have, and this is how we did it with binding. So we bound to local storage. If you remember the very first video in the, the data videos here, we um, bound things to local storage to save the, the location of a shape, but locally, not going to the database. And so here we are setting up a bind called user bind and we're binding whether we voted or not. So we've made a custom object here, an object literal with a voted property. So when we do that, we can't do the, uh, the dot bind method to it. So usually, here I'll show you down, down below here, we're gonna bind to the mask. We set up another bind here called bind. And here we've got a mask. This is what we're doing to send the vote value. We're mask.bind. Well, mask is a Zim object, and it has a bind method that allows us to bind to the Zim default bind, whatever that is. Um, up here, though, we're making a bind on just a, uh, an object literal. This does not have a bind method. So we use the add method of the bind itself to add an ID of user that binds to this uh, object right here for voted, or if you had multiple multiple properties, you could put them in an array and bind to multiple properties. And this is going to tell me right away, did the user vote? So user data dot voted will tell us whether we voted or not. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. I mean, there's one more part to that. But how, like it said, voted false. How could this be anything but false? 
Well, when you set up the bind and you bind to this property, the bind automatically takes a look to see if that property has already been stored. And sure enough, if we've already voted, which we have, this property has already been stored and it's going to say, if we look in the console here at 12, doo -doo, user has voted. True. So I've already voted and knew that. So based on that, you could um, you could stop the, you know, you, you could not even show the vote button. You just show the results or something. Right now we have, like I said, we haven't implemented that, but that's there. Now, what is the second part of that? The second part is down below in, in the voting part. Let's see, there it is right there, user data dot voted true. So this is like once we voted, we're going to update that and send the data to the bind. So now voted true will be sent to our local storage and that's how we record it. So these two steps, that one right there, shoop, and this one right here is how we can find out if they've already voted. All right. Now, one of the things here is this is a bind. And if we go to the place where the second bind is right here, this second bind is no long, it is not the Zim default bind. So that means if we were to come down here and bind on the mask, it would actually bind to the first bind. Unless in here we passed in a parameter saying specifically, like way over here, which bind? I think that one was called bind. Okay, some distant parameter. But we don't want to do that each time. That's annoying. So what you can do with um, the bind here is as you create the bind, you can say, please set this as default. So that's what we've done there. Uh, that's new to ZimBind. It's not actually in 10.9. It's in the latest version that we're working on that we've launched with this uh, ZimBase um, package here. And you're probably, by the time you wa watch this, the latest version will be all launched and all this stuff will be in it. So that's great. All right, so there we are sending off to our PHP page. Once again, we don't want to spend too much time in here. There we are um, setting up our bind. We're binding to the mask. The mask is what shows the star. So if we've only showed half the stars, basically we're sending half, <laughs> half a, uh, of one. So the voting is actually just done with a zero one system. So if they voted two and a half stars, that would be a half. If they voted four or five stars, it would be uh, one. If they voted four stars, it would be 0.8, that kind of thing. All right, <clears throat> now this example goes through and explains sort of why you might want to do this. So why are we binding these votes and bringing back, um, see, why are we binding to a number of votes? Normally, when you vote like this, you would just uh, send that vote to the server and that server would just stack them up. There would be a record for each vote, record, 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 record. And the server would say, uh, oh, now you want to know what the average is? I'm on the server. I'll calculate, I'll, like I'll, I'll probably call an SQL statement that will average these votes for you. That's, that's what a database person would do. Uh, a backend programmer might say, oh, I'm going to get all those votes out of the database and I'm going to use PHP to calculate the total and send back the total. That's what like a coder would do if they didn't know SQL all that well. <laughs> well, we're front end developers. We're creators. We're sitting here. I don't want to be working in PHP. I don't want to be learning SQL statements. You know, I'd rather just send my stuff there, get some stuff back here. And if I need to make a change, like a calculation, I know how to do that in JavaScript. Oh yeah, it's just JavaScript. Wow, I love JavaScript. I'd rather stay here and work in JavaScript. So what we're going to do is show you how you can do that. You can just send the data and receive new data. But the new data that we get, we're going to manipulate and um, put our vote into it and then put that back <laughs> on the server. So basically, we're doing everything here in JavaScript, but it's a little bit tricky. So uh, we need to do this thing called uh, record locking to make sure that as we manipulate our data, somebody else isn't putting new data in there. You see how that could be a problem? Like imagine when we bound here, so here we are binding, if we called our from, if we said, hey, please tell us the information of, of the stars. <laughs> and so we get the information in, including the average. 
and then we take five minutes to vote. And we look at that average and we manipulate it to add in our vote. And then we send the new data back. Well, we've just overwritten everybody else's vote in that five minutes. So if anybody else voted in that five minutes, we don't have a record of it. We just overwrote that. So we can't do it that way. So we don't call a from here and then five minutes later or 10 minutes later, or half an hour later, vote. That would be bad. Instead, we, when we go to vote, so here's the button and here's us mouse downing and we're gonna handle the vote. So inside of here, here's our handle the vote. We're gonna wanna do our data here. What we could do is say bind dot from like that. This would call a callback function with uh, our, our data in here. So we'll call an arrow function and here's our data coming back. So great. When we want to vote, we now are ready to vote. We've hit the enter. We're submitting our vote. We go and get the data from the server at this point, and then we manipulate it. Manipulate. That means take the average and add our stuff into it, and then make a new average and send the data back. So how do we send the data back? We run a two. We would say bind dot two, and we would send that data back. Uh, that, that would do it because the, the data that we're manipulating is already set up in the bind. Okay, so um, not bad. It's two steps, but it happens quite a lot. Also, if the manipulating takes any time at all, and I mean, there's going to be some time because we've asked for some data from the server and there's going to be some time for that data to get to here. We do a little bit of manipulating and then we're going to send some stuff back and that takes some time on the server to send it back. But what if somebody has voted in between that time? It's probably no more than a second or two. But what if somebody voted at the time we would lose that record? So the solution is when we go and get the data from the uh, the database, we lock the record. We say, nobody else can access this record. We do our manipulation and we send the data to the database. And at that point, we enter the data and we unlock the record. And so anybody else coming in would have to wait until the record is unlocked and then they would enter their data. So that's called record locking. And it's been around for a while. It's one of the reasons why, if you can, if you've got people, or if you can do it yourself, you're welcome to do the calculations on the server. If you did the calculations on the server, you probably wouldn't have to do the record locking. You just grab them, stick them back, and it's happening in a fraction of a second. Right? So, uh, but if we don't want to do the stuff on the server, then we can, uh, uh, this is how we can do it here on the client. So instead of doing these steps right here, as well as any extra steps that we would have to do to handle the record locking, Zimbind gives us, boop, 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 delete that, Zimbind gives us to lock. And what that does is what, what we just said. It will get the latest data. It will lock the record. And then once it gets the latest data, there's a filter. So to lock uh, any of the, these binds have a filter that allow you to manipulate the data as the bind is happening, either before or after, etc. So to lock uh, has a filter as well. And here's the filter where we, we get the data that we want to filter. We also get a command. So what stage are we at? So there's various stages from, to, from, and to. So those are the three stages of to lock. From to is sending the data to the server. Well, we don't want to do anything then. From is when we get the data back from the server. So we do want to do something to it. We want to manipulate our data in the from, and then we want to send it back to the server. So from to will lock the record, and to will unlock the record. And we want to manipulate the data in the from. So if the command is from, we manipulate the data. So here's us uh, making, uh, basically this is making a new total from, this is the average, this is the number of votes. So we multiply the average by the number of votes. We add our vote in and we divide by the number of votes plus one because now we voted. 
So that's one thing we have to send back the new average. We also have to send back the new votes. So that's what we bound. We bound the scale and the votes. And so we're manipulating that. We're then passing it along through the filter. So hey, the filter says, okay, great. Now I'm going to send the new data to. I don't know what happened. What, what just happened? I'm going to just send this data to. So our new data goes to. The record gets unlocked. Ha 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 ha. And we have a, a callback function where we're successful or not. So we can determine uh, whether we're successful. And if we are successful, then we do the particle emitter. This is what we want to concentrate on. We want to make like particle emitters. Yeah! Woohoo! We don't want to worry about the data stuff. We want to get that over with. So um, that's what hopefully 2Lock can help you do a little bit. Like it looks like a lot. We got a lot of comments in here. There's actually a fair bit going on outside, but uh, that's really not data related. That's just how it is. And if you want, you can take a look at the Zim Explorer that goes through that. Okay, so um, the PHP. Let's move to the PHP, shall we? Here's the PHP of the stars. It's basically the same as the last video where we are using the Zim base here to uh, more easily handle data. So we're requiring ZimBase. That's where you also log into your server stuff. It's nice because if you're showing anybody this, they don't get to see your password, which is back in there. We have uh, a single record in our database called stars. And so we're going to be storing the JSON file. The JSON file merely has, scrolling down, there's not too much here. The JSON file has an ID uh, field, a lock ID field, and a JSON field. So three fields in there, an ID, a lock ID, and uh, a JSON field for our data. So we receive automatically from, from um, ZimBind uh, a, a random lock ID is sent. It's part of the two lock. Zim, Zim base will turn that lock ID into a variable called lock. Unfortunately, and I don't know what to do about this. Maybe we should adjust it. Um, unfortunately, lock is a, a keyword, a reserved word in SQL and in the database world. So we're not supposed to use lock. So we'll, we'll call our field, like you can't call the field lock. So we'll call our field lock ID. And uh, therefore, we'll just store our variable as lock ID, ah, whatever. OK. so when um, we're getting data from, uh, let's see, what is this? This is sending data back to the server, or sorry, it's sending back data back to the client. Um, if the lock ID is not equal to nothing, then, um, all right, so that means if we are using a lock ID, now remember, it's a bit strange, we put the from first. That, that's what, I don't know if you noticed my hesitation as I was speaking there. I'm like, oh, ah, from. It's a bit strange. The from goes first because in the to lock, the very first thing we do is get data from the server. And then we send, uh, send the data that we want back to. The other issue is we're here on the server where the froms and the twos are different. So anyway, if we are back on the client, this is us asking to get data from. All right, good. So we're asking to get data from. If um, there's uh, not a lock ID, then it's not even going to bother doing this. But otherwise, the what we need to do is is lock right there. So base dot lock. Please set the lock. So that's our field. Uh, that's our table name, and our ID, and the lock ID. Now. You might be wondering, well, wait a minute, you know, what if somebody else already has locked it? Set lock handles that. So all that if somebody else has locked it sleep is all handled in set lock. So we don't really have to do too much. As a matter of fact, if we know we're getting a lock ID, uh, we can, we don't even need that. So you can just put that there like so. Neat, huh? Now what happens is if somebody else is already accessing it, this is going to sleep. So it won't continue on in the PHP. It just waits until it's unlocked. Isn't that neat? So once it's unlocked, then it gets the data and sends it back to you. So this is where the waiting is because it's locked. All happens 
in the magic in here. And by the way, I think there's a default two seconds. It's like not going to wait longer than two seconds or something like that. And you can manipulate that in the uh, Zim base if you feel you need to, but that's a bit advanced. Okay, so that's one of the things you need to do for the locking. Then uh, we get our results back. So this is us sending our results back as JSON. That's the same as we had before. You can do it in one line if you like that. Ooh, boy. <laughs> All right, so that's us uh, sending our results back. And now uh, the, ser the client, sorry, the, um, the, user, or the user is going to, the vote is going to be um, added to the, uh, the, the vote average. And then it comes back here and is being sent in too. So when we insert into the database now, we're doing that fancy insert update thing. So this is insert into the database these things. But if it's a duplicate key, which it will be, and unless it's the very first time. So all this does is sort of gets us through the first time. As a matter of fact, some coders just say, all right, you know, rather than put the, rather than put the um, conditional in all the time, I'm going to hard code in my first record. <laughs> and then I'll just use an update from then on. So this could just be an update uh, and, and not be an insert. But, you know, since we have, it's, it's almost the same ease anyway. We're going to insert into here this information. If there's already information, then we want to update it to that information. So this is for insert. This is for update. All right, now what are we uh, adding here? The ID, and then this is the, the neat part. We unlock the record. Okay, so if the, the record would have been locked, I guess, and now we're just putting nothing in there. So that, that unlocks the record. This part up here locks the record. To unlock the record, we just pass nothing into the lock ID. And then our data gets inserted as well. Same with here. Don't forget to do it in both cases, though. And we reply whether that worked or not. Isn't that amazing? So um, I, I think that's that's really cool. And a thank you for paying attention to all of these data videos. We now have, have the system. And you can see that uh, stuff's happening in here. We're getting reports back because the reports are on where we're sending these various property or like that's our button, that's what we're binding. Here's our data, our data is added, all that kind of stuff. You can look into there and see what's happening. It's a neat system to be able to bind and work with Zim base here on the, um, on the, well, did we hit something? <laughs> I don't know where that's going. Uh, there we go. Uh, work with Zim base here uh, in, in on the, the server side as well. So this has been a, um, a learn JavaScript with creative coding. I am a Dr. Abstract. Uh, there's my symbol, the symbol of nodism. You're welcome to come in and uh, work with Zim and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. We've really, really, really enjoyed making this video series for you. Please share with others as well. Um, hopefully you're, you're into it. If you've got teachers or know people who have teachers, let them know about Zim. It's a great way to learn how to do code. And uh, we'll, we'll hope to hear from you soon at zimjs.com slash slack. All the best. Cheers.